Welcome. On this video, we will be discussing the idea of perpendicular lines. So let's get started. So what exactly are perpendicular lines? Well, for that, let's consider the following scenario. So let's say we have a random white line here and we have another blue line just going somewhere here. They're definitely intersecting at a point, which is right here. Now, if that intersection creates a 90 degree angle, then we can say that those two lines are perpendicular lines. So to define them, pretty much perpendicular lines are lines whose intersection creates a right angle. And notice that this is not exclusively just two lines, because we can also have the scenario of perpendicular line segments. Oops, perpendicular line segments. Let's say we have a white black segment. And let's say we have another blue line segment. If their intersection, it is of 90 degrees, then still those two line segments are perpendicular to each other. Another idea that we have to discuss, it is the idea of a perpendicular bisector. So let's see, a perpendicular bisector. But just by looking at the term, we can kind of see what should happen in here. If two lines are said to be perpendicular, then we know that the intersection, it's of 90 degrees. And if we have two lines that are said to be bisector to each other, then we know that they cut each other in half. So therefore, a perpendicular bisector should have these two properties. The intersection should be of 90 degrees and it should cut the line in half. So now let's illustrate this idea. So let's say that we have a line segment. Let's call it AB. And I introduce a line. Let's call this line CD. Point C. And point D. If the intersection is of 90 degrees, and if the line segment, oh, sorry, let's call this point E. If AE is equivalent or congruent to EB, aka the length of this segment is equivalent to the length of this segment. If those two properties are true, then my conclusion is that the line DC is a perpendicular bisector. to A, B. And I just know it's a small typo because DC, it's a line, not a line segment. So let's put the correct notation there. And I just noticed that in the diagram, we're also missing the notation here. Notice the order of how I'm saying here. I'm saying that the blue line, which is all here, it's the one that cuts the white line in half. It's not the other way around. So perpendicular bisector doesn't mean that both get cut in half. It just implies that one line cuts a line segment in half. So we got to be careful with that. 
The last idea that we need to discuss together is the idea of the distance from a point to a line. So let's see. To a line, to a line. So let's illustrate this scenario. So let's say we have a point. Let's call that A. And we have just some line. Let's call this line BC. What is the distance from A to the line? Now, notice that we need to have some kind of an order because there's different type of lines that we could have drawn here. Like I could have drawn this line from A that connects to B. And perhaps I can say that that is the distance from point A to the line BC. But also, I could have drawn a different line uh, from, I could have drawn a different connection, sorry, from line A, but now to point C. And perhaps that is at a distance. Or I can go even further, like I can connect it even all the way over here. And that will still be seen as the distance from a point to a line. But one thing to notice, and let me just put them all together, and let me do this dotted this too. These three possible distances that we are visualizing here, they all have different length. So in reality, which line do we take in consideration when we want to find out the distance from a point to a line? Well, the answer is neither, because the distance from a point to a line, very important, is always a perpendicular line. If I really want to find out the distance from a point to a line, I need to find out a perpendicular line that starts from A and is perpendicular to the line in here. So perhaps I need to be a little bit careful here. So let me actually give a name here. Uh, let's call this E. Notice that the line segment AE is perpendicular to the line. Well, in reality, then AE is the distance. So let's finish up this lesson by putting this idea into practice. So here we have an example. So let's take a look at what this is. So here we have the situation. We have that PR is equal to five and QR is equal to three. But the question is, what is the distance between P and the line SR? Well, for here, Notice that we're pretty much asking for the distance from a point to a line. Distance from a point to a line. Well, we know one thing about it. Whatever this is, it is a perpendicular line. So if that is the situation here, then if I take a look at point P, the distance should be a perpendicular line, which I'm going to do it right here, dotted. And if it's perpendicular, then the intersection must be of 90 degrees. Now, let's put down the givens on the diagram. I think we should have done that first. Uh, PR is 5 and QR is 3. But now, if we want to know what is the distance, then pretty much the question now is what is PQ. How should we find out what's the distance of PQ? Well, one thing to notice, if we take a look at this diagram, notice that we have a right triangle here. Because we know that the intersection, it's of 90 degrees, because it's a perpendicular line, then I know that this is a right triangle. And if it's a right triangle, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that. If we do the Pythagorean theorem, a square plus b square equals c square. Let's put down the givens. A is 3, so 3 square plus b square. b is pq, so I'm going to call that x. So x square is equal to c square, which is pi square. So now we got 9 plus 
x squared is equals to 25. Let's take it with 9. So now we know that x squared is equals to 16. And to get rid of the square, take a square root. So x is equals to plus or minus 4. So which one do we take in consideration? Do we take positive 4 or do we take minus negative 4? Well, it is a distance. There is no such thing as a negative distance. So that's the reason as to why we're only going to take in consideration positive 4. So what we can say here now, since PQ is equal to 4, then the distance from P to SR is equal to 4. And with this, it concludes our lessons with perpendicular line.